Today I wanted to talk about profilicity and the different modes of identity as have been explained by Hans-Georg Möller, especially in the video we did together. Now, profilicity is something that represents a mode of identity which has come about from an original point of authenticity. So authenticity represented a mode of identity in which identity was attempted to represent an authentic picture of the individual, which especially represented a mode of identity for modern or Western industrialized nations. And throughout the modern development, it has increasingly morphed into profilicity, where identity is expressed by means of profiles. This can be social media profiles, but it has already been anticipated uh, through the rise of brands and branding. Branding is a form of profile. Now, as a third aspect or a third mode of identity, Möller mentions sincerity. Now, sincerity is something he attributes to especially the traditional Chinese culture, but, but more broadly speaking, one could say that sincerity is the mode of identity of traditional cultures. So sincerity means to represent a sort of social role that one is uh, given or one is born with and try to represent that um, role in the most sincere way. The claim that Möller makes though is that all three modes in a sense are symmetrical or they represent um, forms of identity which are were, to be regarded as neutral, as identity doesn't have its own essence. There is no real true identity uh, to which all these, let's say, societal roles or profiles really connect to. Rather, are they roles or profiles that um, are united in a singular identity in a false sense of authentic essence uh, that Möller claims doesn't really exist. Now, as an example, he brought forward that my argumentation against his view or my critique of the denial of an authentic identity stems from me attempting uh, to construct an authenticity about myself by utilizing certain aspects or certain writings of philosophers. For example, in this case, Heidegger and his authentic being oneself, his authentische Selbstsein. Now, my problem is that these different forms need some sort of common anchor to connect together. Like one cannot say that whatever the profilicity, the sincerity or authenticity addresses is real, but the actual common identity isn't. I agree to that extent that the identity or the ground of identity is not some sort of consistent ideal essence. However, um, it is not uncommon to have certain contradictions when it comes to topics like these, especially when it comes to uh, certain areas of Eastern philosophy. In a sense, these kind of topics have been addressed by people like Nietzsche or Heidegger, where they say that it is exactly that emptiness. It is exactly that void when looking at the center of identity, which leads to that which we're looking for when we're looking for authentic identity. So this void, this nothingness that lies at the end of the question of who am I, that is actually what leads you to accept the nothingness, the voidness of the self, 
but then again this voidness doesn't remain it points towards a rebirth a kind of new assembly of what it means to be oneself so in a sense this void has a positive property uh, this void is the essence of that uh, true identity and it is necessary to address and look for it uh, as a human being in the world so in a way the sense of identity is necessary to have and interestingly enough Möller addressed this with a quote from the Tao Te King uh, from Taoism where there's the notion of the wheel which is empty in the middle but has spurs going outwards so there is a sort of structure where different profiles or identities um, originate from but that core the center of that wheel is empty so there is no content at the center of it however this lack of content itself is an essential property so like saying that an essential property of a cup is the emptiness inside it only that enables it to be a cup in the same sense the emptiness inside the wheel the emptiness inside the identity is part of the identity one could make another analogy for example from quantum mechanics where there is measurements of certain quantum states you get a wave function and you can get measurements of certain quantum states and arguably the quantum state or the particle only becomes a particle but only becomes such during the measurement but before that it isn't really there however there is that wave function which isn't qualitatively the same as the particle but it is that which enables the various types of observations so the various types of potential um, measurements you could make in that system these are all analogies to kind of uh, elucidate the point i have in that topic and i would say that it is especially the emptiness which makes it most fruitful to look at when talking about identity because i am not capable of explaining the content of identity to someone that is something that is an experience that each person needs to make on their own and if it is a, a property or an essence that can only be experienced and not explained then in a sense it is something that is truly authentic and it is something that represents an attempted answer at the question that was posed when individualism first arose in the west so one could see the enlightenment and the concept of the enlightenment as questions and as Möller pointed out there's a need for a second enlightenment perhaps the second enlightenment uh, does not need to do away with concepts of authenticity perhaps it is the attempt to actually start to really answer these questions i hope this was helpful and interesting and i will see you next time